Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. On October 19th, 2020, Vitalik Buterin tweeted, EIP-1559 is exactly what the world needs right now. Well, what is EIP-1559? EIP stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposal. And this is a proposal to make a change to the Ethereum network. And there's a whole list of these proposals. If you go to eips.ethereum.org and scroll through, you can see there are many, many proposals, but they're only proposals because Ethereum is a decentralized network, meaning that there is no one person, or in this case, Vitalik Buterin, he does not have the ability to implement this proposal without support from the community. So this is how these proposals work. You send it out to the community, and if it gains enough support, then it will be implemented. And the problem or the issue that EIP-1559 is trying to fix is the current problem of Ethereum gas fees. They are just too high and they are not predictable. And I'm going to break this down for you into two parts. How this proposal, EIP-1559, helps. There is the technical side and then there is the economic aspect to it. So let's start with the problem of Ethereum gas fees. Because so many people use Ethereum, the Ethereum network, the gas fees are so high. Right now I'm on Uniswap with my MetaMask wallet trying to exchange $4 worth of Ethereum and the gas fee is, let's see over here, the gas fee is $6. The fee is more than the actual transaction. And this is because Ethereum works on an auction model. So when people want to send a transaction over the Ethereum blockchain, it's an auction. Someone wants to send it through, and then there's another person that wants to send it through, they're competing. So someone pays a higher price and they get their transaction sent on the blockchain first. So, so wallets like MetaMask, they give us a suggestion. We also have websites like ETH, ETHGasStation.info where they suggest how much we should pay. We should pay for these fees. But the problem is, usually we either underpay or we overpay. Even though it tells us what we should put, we might put that and it might be an underpayment and then our transaction is stuck and it does not get sent through. And then on the other end, it does get sent through because we overpay for the fee. So over here, we're either underpaying and it's not going through or we're overpaying and we did not have to overpay. So with EIP-1559, it's trying to remove this issue. It does not want us to underpay and it does not want us to overpay. Instead, with EIP-1559, users will pay predictable network fees. So this isn't going to lower fees. This isn't going to make fees super cheap. People are still using Ethereum. It's going to be busy. The prices might still stay expensive, but you won't underpay and you won't overpay. And the, re and the way they do this is by moving, removing the auction model. So instead of paying based on an auc auction like, relative to what other people are paying, there's going to be a base fee. So when more than 50% of the Ethereum network is utilized, when the network is congested, this base fee will bump up, it will increase. And when less than 50% of the Ethereum network is utilized, so it's not congested, this base fee will bump down. So it will be a more narrow range of what people will be paying. It will be predictable. And this won't be set by the miners. They won't be able to manipulate the price because if the miners are the ones accepting the fees, they get to choose what they want to accept. In this case, they don't get to accept. The algorithm will set it that either the price will increase or decrease this base fee based on how many people are using the network. So what happens to this base fee that users pay? It does not go to the miners. Instead, it is burned. It is removed from existence. And this is a win for mostly everyone. It's a win, obviously, because now users will be paying predictable fees. They won't be underpaying and getting stuck and they won't be overpaying. But also, because this Ethereum is burned, everyone that holds Ethereum wins. Because by burning Ethereum, now you are making the total supply of Ethereum scarce and more valuable. So this is the base fee. But if someone really needs to get a transaction through, on top of the base fee, they can add a tip. So yes, they can pay extra, 
but the goal here is that they won't overpay. So you're gonna pay the base fee. And then if you want, you'll put a tip on top of that. And the goal is that these tips aren't going to be massive. They're gonna be a small tip for these miners. So I said almost everyone is happy because the miners are not happy because they're not going to get the same high fees they were getting before. They're not gonna get that base fee and then they're just gonna get a tip, which is not as much as they're currently receiving. But you might ask, so won't miners leave the network? There's no incentive if they're not receiving these high fees. But that's not the case because miners continue to receive Ethereum block rewards and they still will get these tips. 2020 has been the most profitable year for miners. They're being overpaid. They do not need to be paid these super high fees for the network to remain secure. It still will, will remain secure just based off of receiving block rewards and maybe receiving these small tips. So they're not happy about it. And another group of people that are not happy or not so enthusi enthusiastic about this EIP 1559 proposal are developers because now developers have to update and work on their, their decentralized applications, on their wallets to implement EIP 1559. So if this goes through, they have a lot of work to do. So that is the first economic benefit of burning the Ethereum token, the base fee. And then the second benefit from an economic standpoint is that with EIP 1559, this solves the problem of economic abstraction. Economic ex abstraction is the idea that in blockchain, you don't need a native token. Instead, it's interchangeable. You can use a different token to run the network. For example, if someone is using a decentralized application and it asks for the fee in Ethereum, the idea with economic abstraction is that you can use a different token. You can use an ERC-based token such as maybe BAT, basic attention token, to pay the fee. And the problem with this is that if Ethereum is not absolutely needed for, for, to make these transactions, then where is the value in Ethereum? Yes, the network can still be used and congested and people are using Ethereum, but if you don't need the Ethereum token, then where is the value in the Ethereum token? So with EIP 1559, this solves the problem of economic abstraction. So in this proposal, only Ethereum, the native token, can be used to pay for these gas fees or to pay these base fees. So there's a technical side. It is easier, simpler for the user. They get cheaper fees. And then from the economic side, it makes Ethereum more scarce and it keeps Ethereum as a native token of the Ethereum network. And this is why Ethereum can potentially reach prices that we never could have imagined. And it is important to clarify that because Ethereum is being burned in these base fees, it does not mean that Ethereum will just continue to decrease over the years until there's no more Ethereum, because there still will be block rewards, Ethereum block rewards mined by the miners. So without these excessive fees, there won't be a surplus of Ethereum, but there also won't be a day where there's no Ethereum at all. It will remain at a very consistent rate and it will be deflationary. And I hope that you found value in this video. And if you have any opinions on EIP 1559, whether you like it or you don't like it, please put it down in the comments below. Thank you for listening, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.